Hello, my name is Kamal, and it's been a minute since my last video. In that video, I showcased a working prototype of a physical aimbot, and I got a lot of reactions to that video. Some good, some bad. But from what I can tell, the majority of people want me to see a version 2. Since then, I have been working on a version 2 of that robot. Here's how that robot performed an unturned, a zombie survival game. It works, kind of. So here's the background on how I built it. First person shooters, also known as FPS games, has been around for a long time. And a key aspect of these games has always been how fast one can flick a mouse to a character. Some of the top games out right now are FPS games like Fortnite, CSGO, Valorant, and COD. I decided to stay away from these competitive games because I didn't want to affect other players' gameplay. I'm not that horrible of a person. So the game I'll be working on is called Unturned. It's a casual single player zombie survival game that's good enough to test on. Even though Unturned doesn't have a fancy kernel level anti cheat like Valorant Vanguards, I'll be working through the same cheating problem as though it does have a kernel level anti cheat. Anti cheats that operate at the kernel level can stop most generic aimbots that will manipulate game files by monitoring programs on a person's computer. But what if we build a system that works entirely remote from the host computer, having no input on the system? Basically, a robot that plays the game the same way a human would. The first thing I had to do was find a way for the robot to see the character. The last time when I made this robot, I was just simply tracking where blue dots on the screen were. Now we'll be tracking unturned zombies. If you have played FPS games recently, you know how every game now has a load of different character skins. So simple color tracking wouldn't work for a real game. I needed another way to detect objects on the screen. To do this, I'm not doing anything new. I'm going to use something called machine learning. Machine learning object detection is not new and it's already done very often for self-driving cars to detect humans. And it has varying degrees of success. A few years ago, the software for doing this real time was top secret by big companies or still in research and development at universities but it has now reached plebeians like me to use. Other cheaters have already used it for games like COD and gotten taken down, and rightfully so, they did it badly and were ruining people's fun. In my last video, I kinda just blew by all the fun computer vision that need to go into the robot. Not this time. To actually find the unturned zombies, I use an algorithm called YOLO V5, which is an object detection model. I could go into detail about how this algorithm is a regression algorithm that uses only a single forward propagation, convolutional neural network, blah, blah, blah. That's boring. And for me, the algorithm was a black box. I didn't need to know how it worked. It takes an input and made an output. In this case, the input was a lot of training data, images of unturned zombies, and the output was probabilities of how likely the characters were on the screen. Getting all the training data was a pain in the butt. You have to manually one by one label images of whether or not something was a zombie and where it was on the screen. I did this for about 5,000 images of just gameplay I filmed, but it did work and I could detect zombies as they appeared on the screen. Next, I added some quality of life displays like choosing to always shoot the closest zombie. So to find the closest zombie, I just pick which zombie was detected with the biggest boundary box. Next, instead of having the zombies look like they had a belly button, with his target point in the center, I adjusted the target point to lock onto the zombie's head, which I did by taking a zombie to the tailor and getting his size and then adding offset to the code. Then I had a good enough tracking of the head. Now you might be thinking, if I'm using a screenshotting software running on my computer, an anti-cheat can detect that, and you are right. So I had to find another way. A simple way that people buy tasks using screenshotting software is by having a capture card running on a separate machine. But I wanted to go all out. I am actually going to do exactly what a human does and look at the monitor of the screen while I'm playing. So I had to build a structure to mount a camera in front of the monitor that I'd run the game. This way, there's literally nothing on the main computer other than the game. After I had the camera set up on one monitor, I would mirror the screen on a second monitor where I could actually play the game. So now I do the label processing again with the data that the camera provides and get 1,000 more labeled images. Then I trained the program, making sure it can detect the unturned zombies. And it actually worked with the camera feed, which I was a little shocked about. But now that's all working, let's talk about how I'll move the mouse to the characters. So, so, so many people commented in my last video saying, get rid of the physical mouse, which I'll be calling Mouse Droid for the rest of the video, and just emulate mouse motion using software or an Arduino. 
but I needed Mouse Joy for two reasons. First, a lot of anti cheat can detect that a mouse is being controlled by software, even if you do add randomness and noise to the mouse motion. Secondly, I just wanted to build a robotic mouse. I could have kept the old design from my previous robot and everything would have worked well, but I didn't like the form factor and presentation of that mouse droid. A lot of people said to put the mouse on a gantry, but I wanted something smaller and sleeker and something I could still be able to control the mouse with. One of the top comments from my last video really broke down my plan for this mouse droid. First, I needed to unshell a mouse PCB and put it in a box. Second, I need to add relays for physical mouse clicking. And third, only keep essential components. And fourth, break out electronics. Those last two points are kind of the same, but whatever. I was using a cheap $5 Walmart mouse before, so my plan is to remove the board from an actual decent mouse. So I ripped the circuit board from a Logitech G305 mouse and made a design to put all the motors, wheels, and the mouse circuit board into this new and improved mouse droid. One thing I added that everyone talked about before was the actual physical clicking. Before that was done using software, this time around, I have a physical solenoid to do the mouse clicking on the mouse droid. The next step was getting this thing manufactured. I was going to 3D print all the parts for this. And here's the final mouse droid robot after it was 3D printed. The robot weighed 190 grams and was five inches by four inches when everything was all said and done. All the electronics were outside the robot and tethered in. I'm going to be honest, this is the worst mouse design ever created even worse than original mouse design, but it didn't need to be ergonomic because the only thing I needed to do was have the ability to generally look around while I'm using it. Now it's time to put it, everything together. I went back to where all started, aim lab. I had to make sure the robot still worked well in aim lab and was able to get a decent score and grid shot off it. I think it's a good point where I say, this is a undetectable aimbot, but it's not a good aimbot. So it will not be the fastest or most reliable this has already taken me so much time and I didn't want to devote more time to optimizing for speed. In this first clip, I pull up on one zombie. This is already in the center of the solenoid, just shoots. Then you can see some really wild controls of the robot, but the robot does lock on. So in this clip, I saw a zombie minding his business. This clip is interesting because the zombies go behind a bush and I lose it. Also, throughout these videos, things like fire hydrant, grills, and trash cans are detected because the model isn't trained well enough because a lot of my training images weren't around these objects. Here, the image detection model worked really well and the robot was able to take shots from super far away. However, the detected zombie bounced around a few times, so my closest zombie algorithm needed to be modified a little bit. Also, controls for this were a lot harder than the stationary aim lab dots. This clip is interesting because the robot got confused because of an object on the ground and I had to take over. Also, another thing the object detection struggle with was zombies when they were super close to the character because in the training model, I never got really close when fighting them. Here we have three zombies and two are in the middle of my screen, but the one on the right is closer. So the robot goes for that one first because I want to prioritize closeness to the character and not the center of the screen. Here, I was controlling the mouse droid, then it saw a zombie and took over. It was able to form a fastish maneuver to get to the zombie. Here's another example of the robot not being able to find the zombie because the plane is blocking it. The last clip is a bad one. The robot is overshooting and stuttering very violently. However, it was able to correct itself without any of my help and lock onto the zombie and then proceed to shoot all the zombies in a row. For the end of the video, I wanted to talk a little about ethics. But seriously, with regards to this robot or others like it and cheating in a real game, it's not happening. The robot, in all honesty, kind of sucks and definitely compared to people, it really sucks. It has fatal flaws such as object detection still being very fuzzy and for far away things, it has no chance of seeing them. Also, unlike other aimbots, this robot doesn't have wall hacks, so you still need to have dumb game sense while playing the robot won't make you a god at the game. What I will say is worrisome is in non-battle royales or games with small map, the object detection could work. However, publicly, there are several companies like Microsoft that are making machine learning based anti-cheats. So robots detecting robots. And the last thing, I know there are going to be people asked to buy for, for the source code. I'm not selling the robot or giving the source code away. I wouldn't even know how 
selling robot would work? Would you sell different detection models for different games? Would I sell the camera too? It's too complicated. And for now, I just want to build cool robots and not sell them. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please subscribe. I will be making more robot videos about cool things I can think of. Most likely they won't be as cool as this one, but I'm going to keep making them. I plan to make an Osu bot since a lot of people want to see that. So that's in the work. I also want to make an aimbot using a physical controller. So that's also in the work. So keep on the lookout for content. I have also set up a Patreon page and a big shout out to all three of my Patreons that sign up before I even announced I had a Patreon. That was really cool. I will make videos regardless, but this definitely will help to allow me to buy parts, tools, and better camera gear since I know the editing and videography were a little rough for this video. But thank you and goodbye. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should.